Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I have an old thing that I've been mislecting. Uh, a while back I changed out the CPUs in my 24-7 server thingy down here and when I did that I got a couple of CPUs left over. A couple of Xeon 56 x 5650s. These are 6 cores 2.667 gigahertz and well I didn't have anything to put them in that's kind of a nice problem right but um, I've, I've heard some rumors and I've said it on one of my videos myself that these might be able to work in an IBM 3650 model 2 and I was gonna test that out today so um, I'm gonna try that I've just powered up the server here and I'll go in and check if the firmware is reasonably new. So, um, but um, I'll update that. So, here at the computer, let's see what I found. This is the System X3650 Model 2, and it's the IBM number 7947. And there's a serial number and blah, 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 blah. Down here is the firmware information from the IMM and the UEFI and the DSA, which is a diagnostics system analyzing something. And they're all from November 2012. So I went over here on IBM's homepage and I found that the UEFI BIOS is the newest one is from 2014. And not long ago, I did a video where I created an ISO file that would work on the Model 2 and the Model 3. So I'm running that in the background and right now it's finding out what's in the system and it will install new firmware and I'm hoping it will just fix these trees. It will also take the RAID controller and any network cards and all the good IBM stuff that is in there. So that is awesome. Oh, we can actually see the memory dims down here. There is four gigabytes and eight gigabytes in one happy mess in there. One, two, three, four. Oh, okay, it's probably not that happy I miss. It's okay. Let's see what this comes up with. Okay, it found all the good stuff here. Let's see, that's the new version. Suggested 120. That's cool. And there is the rate controller, seems to be good. Suggested something for the, the network cards. Okay, a newer version of that. And the integrated management module, the IMM, is also being updated. The UEFI software is being updated here. And the, oh, it's the dynamic system analyzer. I thought it was diagnostics. Uh, okay, my mistake. But it's going to try and update that fully automatically. If you haven't seen that, I have done videos on how to make a bootable CD that will just update all your firmware and drivers on an IBM server. Um, I do recommend watching those. Uh, this is not always that easy to get this up and running, especially if you're trying on an older IBM. There is some glitches there. Uh, more or less, this is brilliant. I haven't touched a finger on this since I mounted it. And I'm connecting to the computer through the integrated management module here. It has this remote console, if you haven't seen so, but that makes me able to see the screen. This is exactly what I will be seeing out in the data center. If I turn on the screen, I could do this work from out there, but um, it's my chair is so soft in here. So I rather sit on my flat ass and see it from in here. But this will be updating and I'm doing this because I think there is the biggest chance of the micro code of the new processors to be in the very latest version of the UEFI firmware thingy here. So out here in the data center you can see what I mean. I can see the same thing on the screen here and it's going pretty well. The four, first four thing is successfully installed and it's working on the integrated management module right now and I lose connection to my screen in the comfy chair <laughs> so I had to go out here and see how it's doing. So. I'll be waiting for that and the server has to reboot and we will kill it when it's rebooting to uh, try and uh, exchange the processors. And a little later, we are now ready to get on with it. We will go next. And we can finish and 
we can um, go exchange the processors. And I need to put here. Do you blah 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 blah? Yes. And it will be shutting down. Okay, it has booted. I let it boot because I wanted to make sure that it is still working. And this is a dual CPU and these are the Intel Xeon E5530s and they are 2.4 gigahertz and it has 64 gigs of RAM. And a really old version of VMware ESXi 5.1.0. So I will probably have to update that at some point. But I'll turn it off now and um, take it apart. So here is the server and there is a lot of stuff in this one so we're gonna get rid of some of these riser cards these has network adapters in it and over here is another one and that one has HBAs in it uh, how much is those 4 gigabit and we have some plastic mufflers or actually there for the airflow and we now have access to the two CPUs so we'll take out the two CPUs here and I have the electric wristband on anti-static thingy taking off the heat sinks this is the original IBM compound I can see that There, the other one. So I will take those two CPUs out and clean them a little bit. So let's take this one out. And I'm cleaning them off screen here so that I don't get all the cooling compound down into the server. Here are the processor. Taking the other one. Trying to be more careful. Here are the, the newer ones. Let's just see the two compared. This is the 5600 and this is the 5500 and they're exactly the same size as far as I can see from from right here. So 2.4 gigahertz and 2.667 gigahertz right there. So let's put this one in. It goes this way. that up there that's one the other one is on the second level so let's pop that in um, and be very careful not to drop it on the pins here if I ruin this socket I think the server is done for it or at least I would have to go out and start searching for another system board for this server yeah of course that it would be a pretty awesome video exchanging the system board but i don't really want to do it for that reason so uh, almost cool we need a little bit of cooling compound on the cpus and i have my way of doing this that was a lot that's my way of doing it And these heat sinks, they can only go in one way. This lip here has to go under the socket. Probably I'm gonna be able to show it better over here. Uh, let's put this one in. These servers are really well built. There's nothing that really um, falls out of place. So it's, it's always just awesomeness put back some of these plastic things that will okay these might sometimes be a little flimsy to get in place but they usually get there like that awesome 
and I need to put down the, the riser cart, otherwise it will be complaining. Let's see, that one went here. And we'll put the 5500s into this case for safekeeping. I have no idea if this will work, so uh, I'm not gonna put them very far. I have just connected power and as you can see the LED is blinking really fast because right now it's checking out the system. I'm guessing that if we get a problem it might already detect it and it did not. The M2 has this little light diagnostics panel, light path diagnostics they call it, that flips out and um, you can check how the system is really nice. But um, moment of truth, let's turn this on and see if we're good to go. This is going to be interesting. It's showing something on the screen. That's usually a good sign. Uh, when power has been taken off a server like this, it uses extra time when booting because the IMM adapter is not really booted yet. So um, it will have to get communications with that before it can really do anything. If you're just rebooting the server, it's a lot quicker. When power has been off it, it has more things to do, like the IMM initializing and memory initializing and kernel loading and stuff like that. We're a little bit further, checking out more systems. I'm actually pretty excited about this. Let's see where we are. UEFI. And now the UEFI platform is initializing. It takes a while. So far, so good. I'm, I'm getting my hopes up on this one. We're not seeing any problems over here. It's not complaining. That one is uh, the one with an AMD graphics card in it. And I did a bit of sawing in the PCI Express port. And it's uh, not always that happy about that one. So, um, well. It's still good. I'm just gonna let it boot. And it's booting. Awesome. Okay, this is so awesome. We are at the computer here. I wanted to show you in here because we can see more stuff. No errors. And down here we can... S that's, that's not the right place actually for that. Vital product data. And down here we can see that we have updated the IMM and that's from this year. And the UEFI is from 2014 and the diagnostic things, dynamic something. Uh, I have no idea why they keep changing that name, but let them on that, that's their problem. But over here, we can see that the ESXi 5.1 is now seeing two other Xeon processors, two Intel Xeon X5650s and there are 2.6 seven gigahertz it works no problem whatsoever not even a glitch it didn't even complain once about having new processors really really weird um, but fantastic and i just happened to go on um, i wanted to see what a server like that cost i could get a used one for 368 dollars on amazon uh, Amazon is not always the best place for this, so uh, you could go find them cheaper. Let's make a note of that, $370, let's say that. And the processor that I just put in, used, that is about, this one is $55 for a used processor, and this one is $58. So let's just say that's about $110, so that's $480 for a server with 12 cores, hyperthreading, and a maximum of 189 gigabytes of RAM. That's a beast of a server. And this processor is not a bad processor. It gets a really good benchmark. Here is the benchmarks for that CPU. Intel Xeon X5650, 2.67 GHz. And it scores 7596. That's not bad for a CPU in a server like that. And you have two of them, right? So that's like 
15,200 in a $480 server. That was absolutely awesome. I just did the calculations and with changing out those two processors, which cost $110 on Amazon, gave me an increase of CPU performance of 65%. That's a lot. 110 bucks. That's a fair amount of speed for that amount of money. So awesome. Looks better when it's yellow, right? The IBM 3650 Model 2 just increased in value here. It became 65% faster. So go get them, boys. <laughs> I have my fair share already. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six of them. And I have one that I've lent out. Maybe go get some eBay auctions and get some good deals on the processors. But uh, well, thank you very much for watching. This was a huge success. Do subscribe so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.